What's up, humans? Welcome to the Human Music Podcast. I'm Luke Rain, my co hosts are Tesco and Rip Kinney, and we are all music producers, artists, and producer coaches. This show is where we discuss all things music production and interview amazing creatives about their origins, their process, and whatever else comes up. This week is episode 130 EP Boot Camp. In November 2022, Ill Gates went to Denver to host EP Boot Camp, and a lot of great folks from the Producer Dojo community came out to learn, including me. Me. And uh, so I talk about my experience there. Uh, we get into eternal recurrence theory, writing your own eulogy, the power of starting songwriting with a strong face, how to write good elevator pitches, turning an idea into a polished song, and how fun it is to meet other music producers in person, along with much, much more. If you feel FOMO having missed this event, there's another one coming spring 2023. So don't worry, stay tuned for that. We'll tell you about it. And also, also, Rip Kenny has dropped his whole audiovisual experience for his album Escapism. So check that out. Link down below. Speaking of links down below, check the link for the new Flow Mads and Luke Rain tune Deja Vu. That's the Flow Mads and Luke Rain song Deja Vu. In case you're getting that Deja Vu feeling here and that twice, it is out on Friday, December 16th, 2022. So if you're listening to this right away, go hit that pre-save link. Please share that pre-save link with your friends and. And, uh, and then if you're listening to it by the 16th, make sure you just go run that song up. It's a really good one. You're hearing it behind me now. It's got those vibes, kind of the reggae vibes, the rap vibes, the dubstep vibes, some of my favorite vibes, all blended into one. You know how I like to do. And there's a song to check out all my releases right down below that. So, uh, yeah, go go run those up too while you're at it. And support our sponsors like the Spice It Up Percussion of Foley Pack. Me and Porch put together over 2,000 percussion loops and one shots of percussion and Foley samples that we live recorded and 50 rack instruments for Ableton and Reason. Yup. Also, Dojo TV. That's these free producer live stream classes from the Dojo Senseis. You can sign up and be in the chat with us during the podcast where we record this live. And there's a bunch of other really dope classes too from other Dojo Senseis. And then there's Tesco's Patreon where you can get access to his Discord, track feedback, private lessons, and more. The weekly download where you can learn from our mentor, Ill Gates, and his private weekly group lessons and get access to over 300 more episodes in the archive for just 20 bucks a month. It's an insane deal. Just brushing up on my mastering game, learning how to get merch out recently. Like, oh man, great stuff. And then guest practices where you can learn from Seth Drake at the Approach Institute. He's the best engineer we know, and your first class is free over there. So, no reason not to. Hit up thehumanmusicpodcast.com to find us and our socials and things. And let's get on into this episode. Hello, people of Earth. This is Tesco with. Rip Kenny and Trap Jesus, and you're listening to the uh, Human Music Podcast. Woo! Hmm. Human Music Podcast. I like it. Hey, what's up, humans? Hey, hey. Hello. But, 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 but. Human Bring Music up. Podcast. I mean, the Human Music Podcast back at you. Yeah, we're happy to be here. Big up, chat. Feeling good, feeling great. And, uh, and uh, you know, having a happy Tuesday. Yeah, we were, we were about yeah, to ask yeah. uh, about them holidays. How was the holidays for the humans? Drop in the chat. How was your holidays? Anything amazing? Any dish especially delicious? Anybody really fuck up the green bean salad? What happened? <laughs> green bean salad you mean green bean casserole, casserole? you know what i'm saying sometimes you gotta be green healthy beans. just put a little vinaigrette on some dry ass green beans and you know <laughs> have a crappy thanksgiving you can't i mean in comparison to green bean casserole dude i mean come on that's like that ain't even in the same ballpark <laughs> yeah, yeah i had a ho- pretty good the holidays time. they holland yeah, yeah i hollered hold- for days nobody out. heard me <laughs> oh yeah, I had a had a friends giving on Friday that was super lit. A bunch of homies Those came so over for fun, a potluck. Honestly, yeah, I love that shit. Yeah, definitely, definitely getting the you know fams. You know, had an early one with my mom and my pops out of town. So yeah, yeah. It was just a friends. And you never it was really great. know. You never really know which of your friends can cook until that happens, and then all of a sudden, 
one one or two of your friends, you're like, God damn, you're Gordon Ramsay. Like, what the fuck? Oh, yeah. Turns out a lot of my friends can cook really well. Really great dishes. There are like three amazing soups, a bunch of leftovers, a bunch of green sweet bean potatoes. Salad. Green bean salads. Yep, exactly. <laughs> but yeah, doing pretty good. And, uh, you know, uh, we were... Uh, we were we were just uh, talking. I I heard a little birdie named Evan told me that uh, there is now a Rip Kinney full album visual out on YouTube. There is. Actually, what let me what? Grab a link to put that in the chat. Yeah, yes. drop that in the chat, son. Yes, this shit be out now. Like, uh, yeah. I mean, when I was. I'm trying to get a link and talk at the same time. Oh when yeah. I was literally conceptualizing the album. Like this video was what I had in mind, like all along. Um, yes. So if you like the album, you'll probably love the video and it'll probably kind of tie up some loose ends of like what the story actually kind of alludes to. But um, there's still like, you know, there's, there's a lot of like, like hidden meaning and like references to different parts of the story within the visual it's at, basically it's something I wanted to be like interesting, like to watch more than one time. And so there's like a lot of subtle stuff that happens uh, kind of like hints at the story and basically just watch the shit, you know? Yeah. I had um, the absolute pleasure to get an early screening it's true. In you were like Bend, Oregon, in it. that studio, sitting yeah. in that you chair in that Evan's chair, in right yes. there. Yes. Yeah, I, I feel real special. I feel like a super fan because I am, and uh, and yeah, absolutely amazing. Um, just like you know, I already liked the album a lot, and then this just like added layers on top of that for me as a as a viewer, as a fan, like to get to experience the whole album with this really amazing, like just I mean before you even did anything to the footage, the footage is super cool, like snowmobiling and running around in the woods and, you know, doing all this crazy stuff in the snow. And then like the way you put the effects on it and like made it extra trippy and like high key gives me like retro video game visual flashbacks, which I fucking love gives me nineties vibes. And yeah, just, the way like things, a lot of things are like have the pixelated effect on it and the way things are, like washed in, in colors, just like, yeah, really, really cool. And then get to like also have the subtitles scrolling a story that just like, like deepens the whole experience of the album. Super well done. Sick. Thank you. Yeah. Well, do we want to start talking about that or do we want to talk about fucking Dojo EP boot camp? <sighs> well, the boy I just mean, went to. That EB boot camp was pretty sick. I, I'm very happy to talk about that. Actually. I think you go first. I think you go first. I mean, all right. <laughs> so teaser on that on the visual album, and then yes. uh, and then we uh, <laughs> and then we're gonna cut away. And yes, yeah, so at the beginning of November, I think it was the second week in November, I had the absolute blessing to get to go down to EP boot camp and. You know, got to hang with Dylan and Dave and, you know, slow form was there. And you had me at Dylan and Dave, but then I you know, throw right? in slow form. Like, come yes, on. We had Shadow Star in the building. We had Alexandra. We mm. had uh, Danny with the balance, you know, just mm. like all sorts of good folks. Plus, like, just like the whole, you know, that's it. You know, that's like the people that work at the dojo there. But then like. We also just like the whole crew of Dojo Ninjas that were around. Just, you know, there's a bunch of people from the Denver area because that's where it was held. And there's a bunch of people that flew in from all over the place. You know, we had uh, Hexa Devi came in from Florida and Sub Octave came in from North Carolina. Um, we had uh, Kill Romeos and we had, uh, we had uh, Miko come in from Texas. We had you know, and, uh, we had, uh, modality came in. So people from all over just, uh, you know, and man, dude, it was such a blast. I had a great Airbnb with a bunch of homies is, uh, is like me, Hexadevi, sub octave. Uh, we had, uh, we had shadow star, Miko, Zach, uh, modality, um, and, uh, and, 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 uh, kill Romeo's Joey. And, uh, and then of course, uh, uh, yeah, Shadow Star's partner as well. So that was like, man, just just it was just an awesome yeah. time. 
Yeah, yeah. Mitzi, so, the best. It sounds like obviously squad yeah. on point. Squad, ten, ten squad out of goals. ten. Squad. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the the eight of us, us about, in the house, and just just throwing this out there, our yeah. house had a hot tub and a foosball table and shuffleboard. They have so, shuffleboard. That's like a. That's like a or not super not a shuffleboard. What's the, what's the what's the one with the sand? We put the sand on yeah, the legs. That shuffleboard? shuffleboard. Oh, sick! Yeah, yeah. that's motherfucking shuffleboard. Yeah, that's that's fun. Yeah, honestly. Table curling okay. <laughs> for the Canadians. Out exactly, there. <laughs> exactly. Uh, that's that's like a really high end game to have it just like chilling at an Airbnb for people to play. It's a sweet ass Airbnb. That's dope. Yeah, dude. We, we we went all out and got the got the spot. It was really cool. So, okay, obviously, so like we said, squad on point. Tell mm-hmm. us a little bit about like the structure of the of the boot camp. Like what were you guys doing every day? What was like the overall goal and whatnot? Yeah. So the first thing, like we had like a meet and greet on Sunday night and, you know, we all just got to hang out, get some food, chat, you know, meet each other. It was so cool just like getting to, you know, hug so many people I've known online for years and then finally meeting in person <laughs> and uh, yeah. meeting new friends and seeing the homies that I hadn't seen since before the pandemic. So that, you know, that kicked it off just right, just emotional high. And then, you know, showed up Monday morning. It was at this super dope studios called, uh, called a uh, KMG life, uh, which stands for keep music going. And it's fucking beautiful studio. We were in the big ass live room, you know, where the, Ooh. they got multiple grand pianos hanging out in the corner. And there's a little stage for Dylan to get up on like a drum riser kind of vibe. And, uh, had projectors going and you know speakers set up and then they had they had three other studio rooms like the control room for the live room you know had these like giant genelic monitors embedded in the walls and the huge ssl board the console you know how much did you guys use that uh you know a little bit uh we didn't use it really we didn't use it a lot well we didn't use the board too much (laughs) but we did use it a little uh there was one moment to fast forward it was on uh the tuesday uh no it was actually on the on the wednesday um we you know what i'll get there i'll get there cool i'll get there this is a teaser that's a teaser so yeah monday we get there and a lot of it's just kind of about like the philosophy like okay you want to make an ep but why though Mm. like What's your vision? Like, what's your, what is your artist project about? How can we tie what we're doing into that? And like, so to think about that, like, what's your elevator pitch? Like, if you had to break down why you're doing what you're doing in a way that'll get the right people to care right away and be interested enough to go check you out, you know, look you up on their phone, ask you what your Instagram is, et cetera. Like, what's that pitch? And that was really cool. You know, that was part of the homework uh, over the first couple of nights was like make an elevator pitch. It was also part where it was like, you know, write as if it's 10 years in the future and write in the present tense about the things you've accomplished over the past 10 years in your musical career and in your life. Really like put you in your own future and recognize oh, okay. like so, this is yeah. what I want to do. This is what I want to have done. But instead of writing it from uh, now, hoping yeah. that maybe it happens someday, yeah. write it from ten years ago as it's already happened for you. Reflecting like on that. on yeah. it, right? So, like it's like twenty thirty two, mm-hmm. and you're you know writing a little little journal entry on on how appreciative you are of the amazing things you've accomplished over the past 10 years. Yeah, exactly. Is that that cements it in your brain as like a going to happen, which I feel like operates different circuits in your brain rather than like a, Oh, I hope maybe one day it'll sometimes kind of like you, you want to be in something like this art or creative pursuits. Like you have to have some sort of inner confidence that it's going to work or or else you're going to chicken out on the shit. That's good and different right Mm -hmm. i love that little twist yeah yeah i I, i've and that's actually not the first like i've actually been coming across that idea quite a bit lately like i took a class um recently where there was like multiple things like multiple times where we use the same kind of from the future writing in the present tense about what we've already done between now and then and um, it's really powerful. 
And I've yeah. also heard it like talked about when people talk about like manifesting and, and mm-hmm. like, you know, um, there's this guy from like, I don't know, probably like a hundred years ago, like named Neville Goddard. And that's what he talked about a lot, um, is about like, um, kind of like imaginal techniques to like, instead of, you know, just writing the goals and like hoping you get there, like really envisioning yourself from the end result of where you want to go and like embodying the feeling of what it'll feel like to have accomplished your goals to have like, just like, you know, maybe like I've heard people talk about it a different way. It's like, imagine yourself like talking to one of your best friends or maybe your partner or your mom or somebody on the phone and being like, mom, like it happened. I just played Red Rocks and yeah. it was fucking yeah. lit. The crowd went crazy. Right. They right. loved my it. new tunes. They had all the words to the hits, you know, that they sang <laughs> along for me. Holy shit. I can't believe it. Yeah. Right. Like, and like feeling that joy and embodying that joy as like an anchor for the goal and dream and like living it as it's already happened, imagining. It. And like, honestly, like I've, before I'd even heard of this technique, I had done it. Like I literally remember like when I signed up for the dojo at the beginning of 2018 and I was like watching Dylan's live streams from his LA studio when he was like first moving in back there and they had like put up that whole wallpaper with the giant crowd in the back. And I was like looking at that wallpaper and there's a guy going like this. You can see his, you can see his, Mm -hmm. you know, rock and roll hands. And he's like, and I'm like, yo, I'm going to be like sitting there in that room, hanging out with Dylan, looking at that. And I'm going to, I'm going to work for Dylan. Like I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to work my way up so I can get a job at the dojo. Cause I love the, the vision of this organization and this community. And it wasn't even like 10 months later, I was sitting in yeah. that room <laughs> next to Dylan and that he offered quick. me a job and it was like, Oh yeah. Wow. This is faster than I expected, but yes, <laughs> yes, I accept. Uh, so this kind of, you know, this kind of thing really works. Like belief is so important and it what's is. more believable than feeling like you already lived it. Not much. Yeah. But except actually, actually living it. Yeah. So. And he even had us write our own eulogy. Like what would somebody say about you at your funeral? Honestly, one of the most powerful things of the OG ill methodology that has stuck with me was the thought experiment of like, I forget what it was Eternal recurrence. Eternal. I was going to say recurrence theory or something. Yeah. Eternal recurrence. Essentially, for those that haven't watched the original ill methodology, go watch it, please. Uh, It's like when you die, you're forced to watch you live your life on repeat forever. So you're, you're forced to watch yourself sit on the couch when you should have been making music all those nights. And like, like, how are you going to feel about that? Like, think about the movie of your life that you would want to watch on repeat forever in, in your head and like make that the life that you're living rather than a life of, wishing you would have done the thing that you should have done, you know? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Like if you were forced to watch this over and over again, would it be heaven or hell or purgatory? Right. Like, I mean like live heaven. (laughs) Fucking a, like just that thought alone is enough to be like, all right, right, fuck what I was doing. I need to get back to like, actually like making some music or like doing something to move the needle. Right. Like if you're something joyful, something fun, just if you're Something unmotivated you don't look at, yourself at all, and think, Ugh. <laughs> just think about think about that real quick and see if it doesn't give you at least a one percent boost. Yeah, amen. So yeah, um, you know, we got into you know definitely spoke on that a little bit that eternal recurrence theory as well, mm. and um, and you know, there's like the elevator pitch, you know, on on Wednesday morning, um, Dylan. So real quick, Dylan, like. On Tuesday, the big thing was like showing us how to start a song. Talked about like using the no middling around technique where, you know, you just, for those that aren't familiar with our listeners, and the, a lot of people get stuck with, in songwriting when trying to make it off the jump a whole like three or four minute song where it has 
you know, the intro and the verse and drop one and the more drop section and the breakdown and the bridge and then another build up and then a second drop that has to be different and then an outro. And you don't even know if this song works with a crowd yet. You haven't even mm. performed it or played it yeah. in your DJ set. So the no middling around idea is like, what's the minimum viable product to DJ? Well, you need a build up so you can mix in a drop so people can dance and an outro so you can mix out. Just make that. And so we got to watch him in, you know, in one day, make five versions, like five attempts at this. And one of the real big and takeaways. Five different songs? Yeah. Sick. Yeah, five different songs starts from scratch. And, you know, started with like a whole pile of cool spark ideas, you know, that were like, oh, man, this really trippy sound design mud pie or whoa, this lyric or whoa, this sample or whatever it was. And like cut bang into that. And uh, and, you know, one of the big takeaways I got from that part was how important it is to start with a piece of the song that carries the song mm. like because some people are like oh hey how about you start with like this drum pattern and he's like sure let's see how that goes for the fifth one and you know started with the drum pattern and then like kept trying to shoehorn a song face onto it and he's like nah it's just it is not working you know some of the other ones were you know clearly better or worse mm. than each other right you know but like that one was clearly the one that didn't come together you're just like, yeah, I started with this groove and I tried to shoehorn ideas on top of it and it just like wouldn't come together. And I've yeah. definitely seen that in, you know, a lot of students' music where, you know, starting with, oh, I got an idea for a beat. And so I started with the beat and then I got put a bass line and now I'm trying to put a melody on top of this beat and like none of the melodies I'm doing make any sense and it's not quite coming together and I can't figure out why. And it's like, well, man, you know, if you like had this crazy melody that like actually worked for sure you could like figure out okay well it's at this tempo and it feels like it would be this kind of beat so let me put that kind of beat on it and the bass line that matches the melody is this and you know or like yeah. you've got this like you know this vocal that's like got this amazing that's why remixing is so dope because you've already got oh, a vocal face that works starting with a vocal that's pre-produced and sounds sick already is the best it's the best like one of my favorite things is like doing a remix like that or just starting with a vocal and writing new chords under it. So much fun. Yeah, absolutely. And like having, having that thing that people will care about, that part is the song. And I think like as producers in electronic music, it's easy to forget what a song is like, but the traditional definition, not saying we have to stick with traditional definitions for everything, mm -hmm. but the traditional definition of a song is lyrics and melody. Yeah. And then somebody does a cover and then a cover and a cover and the whole arrangement, the whole production, the tempo can change, the key can change to make it better fit another singer's voice. But like, it's that song. No matter where you take it, the song is the song. It's the lyrics and melody that are recognizable mm -hmm. and make it this particular song, this unique combination. And the, you know, the the delivery can change, you know, the rhythm of it. If you put it on, oh, we're going to do a bluesy version. So now it's going to be like Lilty where the original was kind of staccato, but it's like, it's still that song. The essence of the song is still there. So like finding the face finding the, the the clear like winner of this makes this song special and supporting that is is really powerful it's not the only way to get to good music for sure you know but it is a very powerful way to get to good music and yeah you know, if you got a good enough thing, even if the first production doesn't work out, whatever hit save as and delete some shit and try again because you got a good idea yeah. No, that's actually a really good point. Like starting starting from something that is that is too sick not to make a song out of uh, will get you to the finish line nine times out of ten for the simple fact that like no song is easy to finish. Some are easier than others, but no song is easy to finish. And therefore, if it doesn't have that thing, that's like, fuck, I need to finish this because this is so this 
is so good. Like I just need to figure out the rest. And like you're, you have just 10% more gas to work through the struggly bits, however many or big or small they are um, for sure. And just like a side note, like myself, every time I start with drums, cause I like, you know, I want to make some neuro drums or something like at any time I start with drums, it ends up as a dusty project file that doesn't get released like that. I totally agree like that. Yeah. Does, I've never found that to work. Yeah. Like starting. I've, yeah. I've got, I've got a lot of unfinished projects that started with drums or, you know, some, some piece of the idea that wasn't especially captivating. And yeah, the most useful thing about those is when I open them four years later and go like, what was this again? Oh, right. Those drums that were okay that I couldn't figure out what to put on them. So I just like bounce them out of sample loops and throw them in yeah, my library. Was, yeah, and then when perfect. I'm like, oh, I'm writing at 140. What do I have in my drum loops at 140 pile? Oh yeah, actually this works here to support yeah. the thing that's worth working yeah. on. Or maybe just the hats. You're yeah, like, oh, right. Yeah, these those these hats, hats are, are sick. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. For sure. So, you know, if you want to, if you got a good idea for a drum beat and nothing comes of it, don't worry. Just bounce it. Bounce the pieces, put them in a folder, well labeled, delete that shit. Delete the rest yeah. of the fucking session and the folder it came in. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's the other thing too. Like, like we always, you know, like we like always, always say at this time. Yeah, dude, that's so funny. I literally had that come up in my head and it's why it like, like <laughs> brain locked me for a second. Like whatever the cadence of that was, like that indicated that's what it should have been. But anyways, if you make drums that are the face, like if drums are your thing and you, you work on a drum beat until the drums are so sick that you can't not finish, this, like that works too. Yeah. But... Whatever you start with, it has to be undeniable enough that you have, you know, that you really do want to finish the song. Yeah. I think of that, that uh, clip song produced by the Neptunes, Pharrell, uh, called Grindin'. It came out, oh, good God, probably 20 years ago. But the drums are just these masses. Boom. And it's just like, and then like every once in a while, this little synth comes in the background and goes like, it's just like basically our intro. Yeah, it's definitely some human music vibes, yeah, right? And is it's like the song is the drums. Like mm-hmm. aside from the hook lyric of grinding, grinding, like I can almost tell you none of the raps to that song that the clips do. Uh, but anytime those drums come on, I jump over to the nearest tabletop and start boom, clap, boom, 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 cocoon, cocoon. It's, it's just fucking incredible. Those drums are a yeah. face. Somebody yeah. probably, I think I, somebody once told me it's like drums from a Korg Triton keyboard. That were really popular to produce on back in the day. Really? Yeah. What? And like it was just like they were just like some stock some stock drum sounds, like three different from this one drum kit on the shit. And it was just like, oh, that kick is massive. That big clap snare is massive. And when you play them both at the same time, it's extra fucking yeah. massive. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's just like it was like so simple, but it's so fucking catchy. So whatever it is, it, if it's drums, it's drums, but like start with something that makes you go, Oh shit. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So let's, let's get the train. We're, we're not off the tracks, but like, we're like wiggling on the rails. <laughs> what was wiggle, the rest wiggle, of the That's a fucking yeah. face right there. I don't even remember who that song's by, but that is living in my head rent free forever. Jason Derulo, I think. Is it? That makes sense. I've never even heard the song. that's already stuck in my head. Oh, you wiggle, have. Wiggle, wiggle, do, 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 do. Yeah, close enough. <laughs> yeah, no, I, you know, the 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 little whistly melody part, I, I didn't remember, but yeah, the wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Yeah, no, it's that's, it's it's that was a hit that's too. That's where you make your money. Oh yeah, um, but Just okay, so tell us about the that rest. Uh, <laughs> God damn it, Luke. So yeah, so that was Tuesday, right? We had you know like got to watch him make these songs, and you know people even got to like send in their ideas for song faces to get added to the pile. And who knows okay, what I was like what? That. I don't know who who sent what. Um, actually, I I sent in one vocal to it, uh, and and one of the beats that uh, that got made had my my vocal about it. That that Sick. we were we were we were a little blazed in the hot tub the night before. 
and, mm-hmm. and joking around, and I had this lyric that was dead ass, 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 astronomical. The way that she could shake and make a body into constellations. And so that got that got used in a in a song start. I don't think that one's going to get finished because the the song that came up around it wasn't as strong as some of the other ones. But I'm probably still going to use that shit for something because I think it's hilarious. For sure. The, yeah. And the cadence, the cadence of that too, like just. It feels hooky. It yeah. feels quite hooky. Yeah. yeah. Playing hooky. <laughs> yeah. Can't won't catch me in school. <laughs> you're full of, you're full of the one liner phrases, dude. I it's it's obvious that you have put some time into your sketch pad of many lyrical phrases and Yeah, man. Uh, some actually I was listening to a, a podcast today with Joe Rogan interviewing Rick Rubin. He was saying like Eminem mm-hmm. just always always, always has a notebook in his writing. Somebody's like, is that all like writing yeah. lyrics? He's like, no, I'm just like writing in all sorts of ways. Sometimes it's lyrics, mm-hmm. sometimes it's not. But I just want to have like a bunch of different ways that my mind can easily funnel into writing things. So when I ask it to write a song, I know the tabs are wide open and it's just right there. That's so funny. You know, it's like I literally just watched 8 Mile like a week ago. And in that movie, they show a clip of his notebook and it's exactly like that. It's like, here's like a paragraph that kind of looks like maybe some lyrics and then like one line and then like a couple words and then like a fucking like sideways thing that's just like scrambled and like another one liner and a phrase and like a question. Yeah, it's like a scene like, when he's on the bus, right? Yeah. 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 And I noticed that. I was like, that ain't all just lyrics. He's just writing shit down. Yeah. If If it comes up, put it down. Yeah. I like it. Um, but yeah, so he took, you know, I think four of them that, that he, uh, that he made that day and he flew to Las Vegas from Denver and he played a show, uh, at a spot, uh, called Disco Pussy and, <laughs> Why and decided that the song that, um, that won the shootout, the one that made the crowd go craziest, which was the one we thought it would, uh, ended up you know, being, it's like, all right, I feel like this is called disco pussy now. And he brought it back on Wednesday after, uh, I, I, and the other senseis kind of ran it in the morning where, uh, where Dylan wasn't there. And we like had everybody go through their elevator pitches and the eulogies and stuff like that. And like sharing with each other and give feedback anonymously. Like everybody sent me the elevator pitches to my phone and I just like read them out loud and everybody in the group would like, you know, give constructive criticism and there's some really cool elevator pitches and, if anybody doesn't know elevator, which the idea is like you get in an elevator with somebody, you've got like 30 seconds. Like, what do you do? And they're like, all right, well in one or two sentences, I want to catch you with what I do. Some, it's a good thing for listeners mm. to think about one, some good ones I heard like once, um, this guy, Aaron Jones, who I think you guys would really like his music. He's a Seattle guitarist, like blues rock dude. Um, but his, at the time, back in the day when I met him, his, his elevator pitch was, my music is like if blues rock meets Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> it's like, Sick. what does that mean? I don't know, but I'm intrigued. Yes. I want, I, I know to enough to, to know I want to know more. Yeah. Like what, what happens when Jimi Hendrix goes super Saiyan? Let's go. Power yeah. level 9,000 baby. Well, follow, follow up line to that first one is on point. <laughs> no, it's true though. Like you, you always think, you know exactly what you're doing until someone just flat out asks you. And then you're like, shit, this is going to take more words than I thought. Like you get halfway through explaining it. You realize you're like five minutes in. You're like, I haven't even succinctly told you a quarter of what I do. Like, I think, I think one thing that is important to note with the example you just brought up is like, you don't have to over explain everything. What's more important is that you create interest and intrigue yes with what you say right because an elevator pitch that wraps up and they're like cool i know you i never need to think about you ever again that doesn't accomplish the point right like you want you want to establish a reason for them to care and a reason for them to care means they have to have a reason to think about you later which means they can't know everything yes yeah yeah if you give them God, what was that? One of my exes used to say this phrase to me when I was over explaining. She says, hey, 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 less history, more mystery. Thought that shit was genius. Oh, God. <laughs> that is genius. 
Yeah. Good times. Thanks, Jen. Appreciate that one. Mm. Uh, but yeah, um, I ended up, you know, writing mine and I'll share it with, with y'all in a sec, but I was trying to think like, all right, well, I don't really be sticking to a genre. So I can't be like, it's this niche, you know? And like, sometimes it's like, if you write in a niche, like tell people about that niche. Cause the people that are hungry for it are be like, holy shit, another drum and bass person. Not that many people make a drum and bass out here. Let me jump on what you're doing or whatever that niche might be, you know, fucking mm -hmm. Celtic dream pop. Like, I don't know. <laughs> Ambient metal yoga music. <laughs> uh, but so I was like trying to figure out like what, you know, what is it about me? Like, I, I like making music for people that get bored hearing one type of music at the show all night. Like, I want I want people to be like, oh, yeah, like, cool, 14 minutes of house music and I'm already ready for the next stage. Like, yeah, man, I'll play you a couple house tunes, but I'm going to play you some bass tunes. I'm going to throw in a reggae tone jam in there. I'm going to be switching tempos. I'm going to be all over the map. Some songs I'm going to go be through the whole tempo fader twice. Yeah, that's how I do, baby. <laughs> I actually had a had like an hour and twenty minute set where I went all the way through the tempo fader and yeah. and then the dude next to me his fucking shit broke. I think I was talking about this on the last episode. Yeah, that's why I said it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, fucking all right. So start playing again. Uh, but yeah, it can be done. Yeah, exactly. Um, so I'm like thinking about like, all right, how do I do it? But realizing, man, you know what I love? Like, I love like puns. My name's yeah. Luke Rain. So I was like, oh, Luke Rain makes cool, refreshing, bassy drops. <laughs> <laughs> like that. and uh brings the drip <laughs> like a hip-hop hippie it's like all right doesn't really tell you anything about my music but you get enough gists like okay there's drops uh you know you, if mean, you know the phrase drip you know it's kind of like hip-hop ish and cool and swaggy uh and you know hip-hop and then hippie you know kind of puts you like eh, that is kind of like my wheelhouse right there like it just triangulated something you get a region yeah. you know it's like a little weird yeah. it doesn't take itself too seriously there's definitely some like hip-hop swag and some edm vibes going on you know and that's definitely all true and that like conveys the person that like is interested in what i do will be intrigued by that and the person that has no need for any of that will know not to waste their or my time and it's awesome. Yeah. And like truly, if you only had five seconds, just give them that first line. That's like more than enough. It yeah. Exactly. Delicious. Boom. Drops mic. Yeah, literally. Yeah. Um, so then after yeah. we did that exercise with everybody, uh, standing outside, enjoying that beautiful Denver sunshine, went back in the studio. Ill Gates got back and we worked. He worked like a whole song. Like he like took the best song and and like started working it. And that's where we come back around to using that, uh, using that studio because the first was like, Oh, Hey, you know, I need somebody to say, you know, give me some lines like this and give me some lines like that. And so people were like jumping out of the room, me included, just like recording shit into our, into our iPhones and air dropping it to him. And he'd like get it on his computer and pull it into the song. And then like sitting in, in the side studio doing the, doing the microphone and the engineer comes in, I'm like, y'all, y'all want to use this like fourteen thousand dollar chain <laughs> instead of your iPhone? Like, yes. So he fucking gets us in the booth. Me and Miko each got in the booth and like recorded a bunch of lines for this tune. And uh, the homie uh, Neon Spellcraft also like did some great lines. There's just he's like in addition to being a, a producer who's dope, he's also a stand-up comedian who's dope. So oh, he had some really oh, funny shit that he dropped in. That like even fair. so much good humorous stuff that Dylan's like, okay, if this song's a hit, I'm going to come back into this session and make like an entire, uh, an entire like comedy VIP edit where I just add all the funniest lines in as the <laughs> turnarounds. Like the first, the first yeah. version will be, you know, halfway serious, and the second version will be a hundred percent fucking hilarious. Yeah. That's so awesome. yeah, so looking forward to that. Um, yeah, you know, whenever disco pussy comes out in a year or two. <laughs> <laughs> um, That's actually so hilarious, though. Imagining like this engineer that runs the, like just the top of the line, high budget studio, walking into the booth and seeing all of that hundreds of thousands of dollars of gear and then just recording into your iPhone. <laughs> yeah. 
This is perfect. It's like, yeah, yeah, it's what SSL stands for, right? A stand for your stupid laptop. <laughs> it's just everybody, you see a bit, <laughs> people with a giant board and yeah. just an SSL, you know, but, but the laptop put perched on top of it. The classic. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Oh, man. But yeah, so then that day, you know, we got to watch him in the process of like really taking it from the no middling around to a two drop idea with a breakdown. You really working on the transitions, doing the phase threeing, doing the extra little edits and mud pies and transitions and all that like extremely important stuff that like, you know, if you don't know how to do that, your song's never going to sound professional and complete. So like got to watch that. Um, and, uh, we, uh, and then the next day he ended up like going through the whole mixing and mastering process as well. And like really showing us a lot of good game on mixing and mastering and how to polish things up and very, like very deep invaluable tricks, like, you know, updates on the things that I was doing, breaking, you know, my brain on things that I am now doing. <laughs> and, uh, you know, uh, and then there was also a couple of really good panels. Like there was an artist panel that had uh, that had uh, Alicia was there, Dreadlock, um, and Chris Carnes, who's like a super dope DJ. DJ's for Charlie Tuna, and he's also like a DJ competition winner. Um, and yeah, uh, that was that was amazing. So many gems in that, and. Uh, there was, I think it was on the Friday, there was a manager's panel. So it was like four people that were in like management and promotions and stuff. And, you know, we all got to, you know, ask questions and pick their brains about all sorts of stuff. You know, I asked a question about like, all right, you know, you got a, you got a new artist you're trying to break. Like, what's the best way to advertise, you know, and what's the best way to spend money on it? And what's the best way to, you know, to... Uh, you know, get free promotion or, you know, do, do organic stuff and got tons of notes on that, that I need to go back <laughs> across. And like, I was just furiously writing, sitting there next to the mm. microphone, just on my phone, like, yeah, yeah, this is all great. And I like wrote <laughs> so fast, I barely remembered what the hell I even got. And so I'm gonna have to take some time. Maybe, uh, maybe I'll get some of that together and practice it. And in a few months, uh, have a, have a episode about that. Yeah. Maybe next time, and not to critique your process, but maybe next time if you're writing that much, just like take a video of it, so you can, you know, uh, you know without thinking about it. You know, I feel that, but then I gotta sit there and hold the phone the whole time. No, 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 or, or just take an audio recording and hold the phone in your lap with the mic facing yeah. the. That's not a bad idea. Actually, I used to do here. that. I actually used to do that fairly often. Uh, I didn't go back and listen to those audio recordings yeah, too much. That, I wonder if I is... have any of those still, because that would actually be dope to like find them after I forgot the the class I was in exists <laughs> and be like, oh yeah. shit, this dope information from 2019. It's like that. That is a really fair point. Like, it is really hard to motivate yourself to go back and dissect the information when it's not happening in real time in real time, you'll write down the most important stuff or at least try to, but it's like trying to balance, like, what do you write down? So maybe you have the audio recorder out and recording, and then you only write down like the choicest takeaways that you need to remember. Yeah. That seems like a good idea. You know, part of the, part of the thing too, is just like having a good way to actually listen to it back. Like when I want to listen to something long form audio, I have a podcast app or a, an audiobook app where I can yeah. like pause it and leave and turn my phone off and turn it back on. And it's automatically saved where I was in the middle of that two hour thing. Whereas like when it's on like a voice note, you know, well, you can your air- phone hiccups a little bit and all of a sudden you're like, wait, what minute was I? Now I gotta like, shit. I mean, I don't want to, I don't want to come at you with too many ideas here, but you can just airdrop it to your computer and like, I, open I it cannot up and I, do that. Yeah. Oh, okay. PC uh, gang. You, you can, you, you can hit the share button in the voice note and email it to yourself. Oh yeah. Yeah. And then open it in iTunes or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Again, mildly off the rails. So continue. What other, what other highlights from man? One um, of the biggest highlights was actually the rap party on Friday night. We had, uh, we had, just like a bunch of the people who were there um, do DJ sets and ended up being like a little less time and a few more people than we thought. Cause a few of us were supposed to play on Sunday, but the venue didn't work out. So, mm-hmm. um, but it ended up being like amazing because everybody doing a 30 minute set just brought like nothing but the heat. 
Yeah. So it was just super dope. Like, uh, um, yeah, really awesome. Like I really love uh sub octave set, super bassy and halftime goodness. Uh, and then Hexadevy came with like a super upbeat set that I really dug. Rhymetry had a dope set that I really liked. Um, uh, Neon Spellcraft had a sick set. I know there's more people. Uh, Q-Bird, Shasta Q-Bird had a really dope drum and bass set. His elevator pitch I really liked. It was, I make drum and bass for people who don't know they like drum and bass. <laughs> I was like, that's fucking lit. And I'm not yeah. like... I, I dig drum and bass a little, but after a few songs, normally I'm like, okay, can we slow it down a little bit? Mm-hmm. But he played yeah. drum and bass for 30 straight minutes and I couldn't stop dancing. Like, mm-hmm. he, he, he chose so many good remixes and mashups and shit that like, you know, got me like super into the tune. I'm like, oh my God, a Cab Calloway, Heidi, Heidi, Heidi Ho, like mini the Moocher remix, like giving me Blues Brothers flashbacks, like, and then it drops into, and it's like, man, this shit is fucking filthy. Um, well, it sounds like he delivered on his promise. Yeah, it, I was thinking better, hundred percent. Like, I was like, yeah, I didn't, I didn't know I was this big a fan of drum and bass, but you got me mashing for thirty <laughs> whole minutes. Like, I need to, I need to step outside and catch my breath. And uh, amazing. yeah, and uh, and then uh, Daniel with the balance had an amazing mm-hmm. set where you know he'd like press play on the record and then like run around in front of the DJ <laughs> table and like sing, and it was he's got pipes. Dude. He's got pipes, dude. I was like, man, I was thinking about he actually uh, he played uh, some of those guard the guard remixes as well in there. I'm trying yeah. to remember Rich- if he played yours or or mm, uh, or I, I Richards. Doubt, I, I doubt he would have played mine. He Richards is like real, real nice. He probably played that one. <laughs> yeah, it might well, have been. I think he opened with just that to one. Be fair, but he like, shouted yeah, you out. Just, oh, I appreciate that, yeah. Daniel. Thank you if you're listening. Um, but yeah, I was gonna say mine would probably not fit in the overall aesthetic of what he probably actually. What what kind of stuff did he play? I mean, it was all um, you know, it was like kind of. EDM themed pop music, you know, like, okay, like yeah, you'd expect of him, work. you know I mean? He definitely, yeah. uh, especially early on with like, um, body and stuff, like he was doing some more like pop punk vibes, but this is definitely like leaning more into like that guard kind of vibe of like the future mm-hmm. bassy, you yeah. know, big synth soaring hooks, you know, um, very, you know, very like EDM droppable, but, you know, also pop sensible, which, you know, that's a Venn diagram I love living in. So I really enjoyed his set a lot. Um, and then I got to play after that and, and just played an all original set of, of tunes that I've been, you know, I played a couple of my releases, but I played a lot of stuff that I've just wanted to test out in front of the homies. And it was super fun. Uh, got some, got some good videos of me jamming up that I got to put on reels and, and the homegirls dancing in the front row. Appreciate them. And, mm, uh, yeah. And, um, Oh, any, that's, any that's another tunes? person who I always wanted to say, uh, missing links. Yeah. Shouts out to missing links, homie from the, yes. from the dojo. And he's been on the podcast, uh, played a set of all originals as well and crushed it. Like that guy's got Sick. so much dope music that, that needs to be put out that he's, he's, he's about to, he just released his first one a couple months ago. And he's just told me he's about to start coming really regularly with these releases, which thank God, because there's so much dope music ready to hit the scene from this guy. Yeah. And then yeah. To, to close out the night, uh, Alexandra played an absolutely like tear down the house DJ set, which was like, Mostly like New York hip hop samples mixed with just fucking grimy fucking headbanger drops. Like it was amazing. Set of, set of the night, in my opinion. Like really, I mean, you know, she 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 be doing this. Yeah, she knows what she's doing. Yeah, yeah. You were gonna ask though. I forget. All right. Well, we're fucked. Nothing to talk about now. <laughs> so, what was your favorite part of the boot camp? Man, for me, it's the people. The people in the dojo community are so dope to be around. Like all the knowledge true, was honestly. amazing. I've got so many notes, things I'm already putting into practice, things I'm thinking about. You know, he had like, there was classes on 
how to, you know, how to promote and different ways to automate things. There was classes on like how to spot good and bad graphic design so you can make sure yours is good, you know, and, you know, like different, you know, definitely don't do this and definitely do this kind of things. Like don't mm. put your text over an image so that you can't read what the fuck it says. Don't have a, a word mark for your logo. That's, that's baffling. Mm-hmm. <laughs> there was one picture that came up that was just, just a, a pile, like a, a pile of sticks leaned up against something. And it was like, I got the new logo for my metal band. <laughs> <laughs> it, looked, it looked exactly like a metal band logo. It was so funny. That's amazing. It's yeah, completely illegible. But uh but yeah, um really when it came down to it, like the people getting to be in the room with that many people, getting to, you know, share the camaraderie and, you know, talk with each other about what we'd been learning and bounce off what different people of us had learned and what we had picked up from the different things, what we retained and, you know, getting to hear people ask questions at the panels and of Dylan, where I was like, yeah, I thought I understood what was going on. And then somebody asked a question that like the answer brought out stuff I didn't even think of to ask about. Sure. And, and that synergy is really powerful. And that's like one of the best part about going to these kind of live events is that you get to meet these people. And, you know, I mean, it's kind of the same reason we do this podcast, right? It's just dope to hang out with people and (laughs) talk about the things that we love nerding out about. Yeah. I literally was going to say like, anytime I'm hanging out with people from the dojo, it's incredible. But like, I think the thing a lot of people don't think about is like, even though you don't know these people, you know, personally much at all, even if you've interacted like a ton with them, you're still like, oh, I don't, I don't, you know, I don't really know them personally. You will never run out of stuff to talk about a and B like you, I forgot my B, but it was good. Give me a sec here. Uh, come on. Hmm. Good B. Good B. Um, could be a good B. Could be, should be, could be, if it could be, you keep talking and I'll think of it. How much wood would a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? Not that they can. I I thought of it. Thank you. Um, (laughs) Most of us don't have like really good friends IRL that are also music producers first. I mean, like, just have really good friends on a URL. Well, like, right. Yes. But in general, like over the years growing up, like you might have transitioned into becoming a music producer, like, and you still have the same friends, right? If you tried to have an in-depth conversation with any of those friends that don't also produce music, like you're in the weeds, like on day one beginner shit. Like, and so you just, you can't really nerd out about the stuff. And so like when you're around a bunch of other people that are like also as nerdy as you about music production, like that is just fucking fun in and of itself because finally you get to sit there and have the conversations you'd like to talk about and like have like high level back and forth. I mean, like you just said, the reason part of the reason we do this podcast is because it's a dedicated time for us to sit down and nerd out about the shit that like we don't get to nerd out with other people on it. Like we do it all the time, daily really Mm -hmm. but we don't get to talk about it with other people daily at a high level and like it's it's just fun to do so if you're passionate about something you want to chat about it so amen yeah Mm -mm 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 -mm. so uh that was ep boot camp and if you're feeling listening to this right now that fomo that deep deep fomo Oh no, FOMO! Oh no! I hear tell they're gonna do another one in May. Mm. Dun dun dun! May 2023, Denver, Colorado. No, you got to do it in like the announcer voice, like you're in, in a, a world where you didn't go to EP boot camp. <laughs> you may be feeling FOMO. But no, bro, no worries. No worries, brother. I fell into <laughs> professional wrestler way too fast there. May, May, May. Be there. Tell me what it is. Uh, may. may. It may be in May. 
I, I doubt they have dates locked down, but um, that's the idea. There's going to be another one. So if this is like really hitting you uh, as a thing that you wish you had done, don't worry. There's going to be more. The next one's the one that was right for you. So yeah, uh, stay tuned humans. And we will definitely, definitely be uh, dropping links to that and telling you about it when we know that it's going to happen and what the dates are Yeah, when there's a link available. So yeehaw rock and roll. And, uh, now, I, I was wanna... gonna say, I think, I think we, sh- I think we save the video for next time. I do. I know that's a super. I know that's a super tease. But I mean, shit. You want to tell these people? Just, just te- te- tease them just, a little bit more. I'm tease a, them I'm a little. Just, I'll just give you. A, I'll tickle maybe their a little fancies. Bit more, a little bit more. I mean, it's it's one of those like, it's one of those things that uh, if I ex- explain too much. You know, you you will uh, have predetermined conclusions mm. on how you f- on 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 the on the story itself. But I will tell you that, uh, like, literally since the day I started making music, um, well, that's not true. But like the first year I started making music, I always had this concept in mind. And I think we've talked about it in the days leading up to the album release before. But like this piece of art has always been something that I've wanted to do. And it took damn near 10 years to get to the level where I could make the music at the level I wanted to. And my, um, you know, video editing chops to a point where I felt like I could do something that's enough to like stand up and, and present what I wanted to show in the way that I wanted to do it and like actually figure out how to have an art style with it and color it and everything. But it is basically the culmination of like 10 years of working at this and three years of actually dedicated work um, on the music and the story and everything. And um, it's uh, it's it's just, you know, it's a journey start to finish. And if you like I said, if you like the album, you'll probably love the video. I mean, you did such a good job of explaining exactly what it was earlier. It's got like a like you know the, the the art style has like a theme of like you know kind of video gamey a little bit and it's just generally uh something i've poured my heart and soul into for a really long time so it's it's worth watching in my opinion but that doesn't matter much for you watching it or not yes you it does if you want everybody to watch, watch it. it watch it now please watch it watch it it's now good, i think there's a link there's a link down below and if you're in the live, there's a link right scroll up a little bit in the chat. If if it's live, scroll up. If it's the past and the future time, when that's really now the present, time travel. Scroll yes. down and you'll see mm. it. It'll say Rip Kinney Escapism Visual Album with a YouTube link. Go check that shit out. Yes. It's hot. So pumped that it exists. And Me too. Uh, yeah put it on oh, yeah. and it gets trippy it's dark it's heavy it's beautiful and like if if between now and the next time we are talking to the future humans you watch it and are curious about how it was made or any of the parts of it like we'll be here to talk about it so i can answer any questions if you want to pick my brain on any of that or otherwise i could just tell you generally the process and all of the inner workings of it uh, but yeah, like if you watch it and are curious about anything, ask. Yeehaw. Well, on that note, humans, thanks so much for being with us. We got some people in the chat, like secret guests and about to watch Dude, okay, it hold on. right Just after shout, we're done like, here. L- real quick, like big up secret guest, Jake, you are always in the chat and I yeah, appreciate you like a motherfucker. Cause you, you like don't miss a live. And for the three of us, that like actually means the world. Like for real. Amen. We go. You are quite the human. And, and Blue, we we Blue, we see you in here like almost every time. So fucking big up to you too. Yeah. Yeah, version K, you're around pretty often too. We got a good group of people that shows up. We do. Mm, appreciate you. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. Tell, Tell your friends. Tell your friends. Share, share the Whoa. podcast. Yeehaw. And uh, until next time, we'll give you the peace. And peace among worlds. <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah, humans, thank you so much. Make sure to like, follow, subscribe, leave a comment, leave a review on Apple Podcasts, whatever you can do. Share this, get it to more people. If you like what we do, show your appreciation by showing more people. Tell the folks that this exists. Appreciate you. And uh, definitely check out the Rip Kenny Escapism visual album. It's super dope. Go bump the new song, Flo Mads, Me, Luke Rain, Deja Vu. The pre-save link is down there below if you're listening to this right away. And on December 16th, that becomes a live link to bump the song on any of your favorite platforms. And then, uh, and then all my releases are right down there on a playlist that you can check out. And on the, on the 16th... Uh, Deja Vu will be right at the top of that. You can hear all my tunes in a row. Uh, and support our sponsors like the Spice It Up Percussion and Foley Pack. That's me and Porch putting together over 2,000 percussion and Foley loops and one shots. Really spice up your drum beats. And you get 50 rack instruments from Ableton and Reza. And you can get Dojo TV. That's a free membership. It's just producer live stream classes from the Dojo Senseis. We record the podcast there. There's a bunch of other amazing content over there as well for free you can get in the chat meet people learn from the best tesco's patreon where you can uh, get access to his project files behind the scenes footage his discord his track feedback his private lessons and more go learn from your boy tesco he's super dope he's smart he knows what he's doing and uh, the weekly download where you can learn from our mentor ill gates and his private weekly group lessons and get access to over 300 more episodes in the archive for just 20 bucks a month yes amazing stuff over there and of course guest practices where you can learn from seth drake the best engineer we know over at the approach institute your first class of guest practices is free and there's the entire approach course you can get the self-study one where you can just go through all the video content uh, at your own at your own pace or if you want to pay a little more and you know the kind of person that knows the value of having some guided coaching through material like anytime you ever went to a class hello college what's up producer dojo um then you can pay a little more for the time of the people over there to help guide you through the content and highly worth it highly recommend it really leveled me up so make sure to go check out support our sponsor links down below hit up thehumanmusicpodcast.com that link's down below too if you need to find us on socials want to holler but for real for real peace humans and peace among worlds